Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Jim Rauenhorst. Christ our King is coming. He is the Lamb foretold by John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I'm Father Ben Keller. Uh, I'm here. I'm in uh, West Lafayette, uh, Indiana, at the, the kind of the Newman Center at Purdue University. Um, just back for a week visiting my my family, um, and it's always always a joy just to come back and to be able to celebrate Mass with with all of you and to to be here in a place where where I grew up. And and today we we enter deeper into this this second part of Advent. As the second part of Advent, we, we really begin to focus on the nativity. We focus on, on Christ coming um, in, in, in Nazareth 2,000 years ago. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by, the slavery be, by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and is right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. And this is the name they gave him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands to which I banished them, they shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Justice shall flourish in its time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in its time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in its time and the fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, and the lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O leader of 
the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. So we've, we've moved now into the second part of Advent. So Advent has, has two parts. And so you have the beginning where we're really, we're focused on, on the second coming and on a lot of these, these things really preparing our hearts. And once we hit the 17th, the 17th of December through the 25th, everything is very now focused on, on Jesus coming and on his, on his coming into the world in, in Nazareth. And so... If yesterday wasn't a Sunday, we would have had the, um, the genealogy of Jesus. So the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. Then we have this second portion. Tomorrow we'll get into Luke, and we'll be in Luke for a few days of looking at. But it's looking at this, how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. And all of the, these incredible things that happened, and the way the Lord entered into the world. The way he spoke to people, the way he came in, and he did things in ways that that aren't normal, right? He's, and so we have this, this situation. And today, I think we get the, the beauty of Joseph. Right? And Joseph wrestling. Wrestling with what's going on. So Mary, we have the angel appeared to Mary, and she receives this. And she says, yes, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. And then she goes and visits Elizabeth for three months. And then she comes back. And just, I, I wonder what this is like for Joseph. As he's beginning to see, right, he sees Mary, who he is betrothed to, which means he's legally married to her, but they haven't yet come together, right? And they're, they're in this time, and he's like, he starts to see that, that she's pregnant. And just, I wonder what is going on in his mind and how he's wrestling with this. Wait, she's pregnant. How is, how is that? He knows her. Right? He knows who she is. He knows her holiness. He's, she, she's the one person in the world without sin. Right? He's the, he, he knows that. She's like, what is going on? And I can imagine just he's, he's having to wrestle with this. What do I do? And a number of the saints have talked about how he recognized, no, there's no way this Mary could have been unfaithful, but like, who am I? Imagine this is something that, that is through the Lord. Imagine this is something miraculous. Like, who am I to be there? Who am I to be her husband? To, to live with her? Like, how am I being called into this? You know, but whatever he's wrestling, I, I just imagine, right, there's got to be a wrestling in there. And eventually he comes to this decision to divorce her quietly. I imagine there's a lot of prayer in there. Lord, what's going on? Because Joseph is also a righteous man, a whole, very holy man. 
Lord, what's going on? Right, what, 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 why is this? To, what, is, what do you want me to do? And for a long time, it's not clear. Right, it's not clear to him what to do. But I imagine he continues to wrestle, right? He goes about like, what should, and he, he comes to this, okay, I will, I will somehow, I will find a way to quietly separate. Because cause maybe I'm not worthy. Or maybe, you know, whatever he's going through. But in that, and there, there's a beauty, I think the Lord allows him to wrestle with it. In the same way he allows us to wrestle with things in our lives. There are things we come to the Lord, we're like, Lord, what, what do I, I don't know what to do. And he doesn't give us the answer right away. He doesn't always come in and like right at the beginning say, oh no, this is what you're going to do. Like, and we're like, ah, oh, Lord, like this doesn't make sense. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay to wrestle. To try to understand, but even to not understand. And in the end, the Lord comes to him in a dream and says, No, Joseph, don't be afraid. You are worthy because I've made you worthy. No, not of anything that you've done, but no, you're, I have chosen you for this role. In a role that's probably bigger than him, I imagine he's like, Oh, Lord, I don't know if I can do that, but, like, but yes, I will do it. Right, you will make me worthy. You will, you will bring me to that place. And this, so I think this, this beauty of today and this, these readings that we have today of just the, the beauty of how the Lord doesn't always answer our questions right away. And that's okay. It's okay for us to wrestle with these things sometimes knowing, knowing always that he is there. Even if he doesn't answer it right away, he's there, he's with us, and he will lead us and guide us through all of it. And if, if we're making a decision that it might be wrong, maybe he'll enter in. In some way. But, but I think this, the, the beauty of like it's Jesus coming into the world, that God acted in different ways. Right? And if we're like, if maybe we're in the, this role of Joseph, like, oh, Lord, I'm not worthy for the role that you have given me. The Lord says, no, I make you worthy. You're my son, you're my daughter. I'm calling you to a mission, a mission in some way, in some form. But yeah, so I think this, just as we enter this, this Eucharist, just Lord, Lord, prepare our hearts. Lord, help us to know that you are with us in, in whatever is going on in our lives and whatever you call us to. Lord, prepare our hearts and help us to know that, that it is not on us, that it is you that make us worthy. And just give us the strength to continue to wrestle with you when anything in our life doesn't make sense. Just to know, or to know that you are with us, that you are there through all of it. Now we turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers for our church, for Pope Francis, for our bishops, for our pastors, for, for all the lay people who lead and who guide in the church, for just a deep, a deep union with the Lord, for the courage of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For our political leaders throughout the world, for that they may put aside differences and be able to come together to to pursue the, the common good, to pursue life, to pursue peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are, are wrestling with difficulties in their lives, who, who the Lord is calling them to, to a mission that they may not feel worthy of, that they may know just the, the depth of the, the presence of the Lord and that, that he is the one that makes us worthy, we pray to the Lord. And for just an ever deeper courage and the courage of St. Joseph to be able to say yes to whatever the Lord is calling each and every one of us to, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord. And that the Lord would continue to prepare each one of our hearts for, for his coming at Christmas and, and deepen our longing for him, for when he comes. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all our faithfully departed, especially those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Eternal, merciful, and loving God, we bring all of our prayers to you, knowing that you hear them. Answer them according to your most holy will, and we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be companions of Christ, whose death our own mortal, our own mortality was healed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Amen. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. His name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us.
Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.